Good evening and welcome to it. This is Chess and Wine. My name is A.D. Baylor. Back at you with some public service announcement. I didn't come my head today, but obviously, beautiful as natural world as it is. Mm. This it pertains to the registration of uh, federated and chess rated tournaments, and obviously, clubs, regions, and, cl and uh, federations paying for um yeah the feeder rate the rating of their feeder tournaments two letters so far have came out from have come out from um chess south africa regarding the payments because remember that they are owing or oh, we south africa is owing or is it they yes chess south africa is owing fide an amount that has been yet to be disclosed so we don't know yet but obviously it's a lot of money and they keep emphasizing that we owe fide otherwise we stand the risk of getting banned by a fee day, like obviously in the previous uh, uh, years, before the Fortnite saga came out. Like, remember the reason why we got banned in 2017, 2018? Yep, that debt, that had to be paid. And obviously, Chess South Africa then had to obviously um, take a loan from the Fortnite. We are approaching something similar. And I wouldn't put it past the current executive to do something similar to what the Hendrik de Toit executive did. <laughs> I, I wouldn't put it past them. I'm not them. I'm not saying that they would do such a thing. I'm just saying. So far, I mean, they've been doing it. They've been, they've been, they've been following the same script, uh, the same old script from the previous uh, executive. So who knows, right? Like, <laughs> they might just come and say, hey, we had to take a loan from um, uh, four bishops. Or from some three bishops, or from three black bishops, and then yeah, we had to take the loan to pay back feed it. And then later you find out that the chief executive of the three bishops is uh Andre Livax. And <laughs> I mean I'm just saying, I mean, by the looks of things, if you follow if you follow the yeah. Yeah, it, it, it'll just, it seems like it's gonna get it's bit it's a bit predictable. But anyway, see, I'm back on my wine talk. So anyway, let's not let's let's forget a wine talk. Let me just read the letters for you. So I've been I've seen I've seen this letter. I've seen this one that came out on the eighth of August in 2024, and it reads as follows: Yes, sir, oh, madam, it's uh, for the attention of uh, provincial executive committees, regional executive committees, and clubs. Right, and it says regarding the registration and rating of FIDE tournaments. I'm just wondering if it doesn't pertain to the Chester tournaments. But anyways, it's just what it says. The, the following procedures for the rating and registration of FIDE tournaments will be, it says, will in effect from 08 August 2024. Remember, I did tell you that the signs that the Lizelle is missing from this will show. These are the first, these are some of the signs that we are missing that uh, qualified secretary we had. So now everybody's just playing secretary because <laughs> in the absence of. <laughs> so, yeah, the following procedures for the rating and registration of FIDE tournaments will in effect from 8 August 2024. So, yeah, no FIDE rated tournament will be registered for all clubs, regions, and provinces with outstanding FIDE debt. Clubs, regions, and provinces with outstanding feeder debt is requested to pay, right? Is requested to pay all outstanding feeder debt for past tournaments by 30 August. I mean, like some things, if you read them, it just going to make you feel like ah, it sounds like a scam. If it's really from Chess South Africa, there'll be some proofreading and some. If it's really from a proper Chess executive body, ah. Man, there'll be proper proofreading. I'm just saying, but anyways, yeah, it just continues. It says, um, yeah, clubs, regions, and provinces with outstanding feeder debt is requested to pay all outstanding feeder debt for past tournaments by 30 August 2024. Those that struggle, uh, uh, those that struggle to pay their debt will be required to submit a debt repayment plan to the treasurer of Chess South Africa by 15 August 2024. Yep. Failure to comply with the above will result in the non-rating of tournaments. So here it says by 15 August, right? The following procedures will be implemented for feeder tournaments effective from 2 August 2024. All feeder tournaments must be registered through the ratings office uh, of Chess South Africa. Who is the ratings office of Chess South Africa? Gunther van der Berg. But I'm hearing rumors that he might be getting replaced. Are there just rumors? Are there just people talking? So maybe there's nothing concrete around that. Let's leave it at that. And uh, number two, all tournaments files must be submitted to the ratings officer within four days after the tournament. The ratings officer or 
Yeah, this is crazy. Honestly, the proofreading, the lack of proofreading. So it says the ratings officer or will then inform the regional administrator about the amount that is due for the rating of the FIDE tournament. The tournament organizer of the FIDE tournament needs to pay the tournament fees into the Chesa or the Chesa Africa Bank account within three days after the notification from the ratings officer. The tournament files off will not you. The tournament files off will not be submitted to FIDE if the tournament fees are not paid into the Chess SA bank account and the tournament will subsequently not be rated. Eish. Honestly, the lack of proofreading. Arr, yeah, ne? The eggs will, will consider not to allow any Chess SA rated event to any club, region or province that does not pay their outstanding FIDE debt. Should you have any inquiries, please direct it to the treasurer of Chess South Africa, Carol Lefieri. And then his email address. The above measures have been put in place in order to make sure that FIDE debt is being paid. Chess South Africa is facing a suspension from FIDE should we fail to pay our international debt. We request provinces to forward this communication to all their members as well as clubs. Kind regards. Provinces are not... Uh, provinces are not supporting this communication kind regards under the works a executive um, yeah so we uh i'm, I'm, I'm saying I've, i got this from uh, a different group uh, i have not seen it in the provincial groups i have not seen it in the uh, regional groups so I, I don't know why the provinces are not complying but anyway so yeah so that was the first letter right which say which stated that by 15 August be, people will be I mean yeah regions will be suspended and we're way past 15 August now right and now it's the 23rd as I'm reading this of August and there's a letter that came out today the 23rd of August it reads also for the attention of provincial executive committees regional executive committees and clubs and uh, dear sir madam mm. Read the registration and rating of FIDE tournaments. Chess South Africa, Chess SA, published the procedures for the ratings and registration of FIDE tournaments on 1 August 2024, which we received on the 8th, obviously. We are pleased to note the significant, the significant number of provinces out of nine. What will be a significant number of provinces out of nine? Significant number. I'm thinking five or six, right? And above, right? Yeah, leaving about three. Okay, let's go. Um, yeah, we are pleased to note the significant number of provinces, regions, and individuals that have settled their outstanding debt, demonstrating their commitment to rebuilding Chess of Africa. However, there remain several uh, provinces, several provinces out of the significant number that has paid. You see this kind of things that can make sense? All right, so a significant number of uh, provinces have not paid. And have paid right significant like a significant number out of nine will be like yeah more than them yeah a, a bit of majority so now when you're talking several is this the several that have not paid hey nah man you maybe it's just me so it is yeah there remain oh there remain several provinces and regions that are unable to settle their debts and have not yet submitted payment plans for doing so in light of this uh, the executive uh, board expo has decided to grant an extension for those for, the, for these provinces it was supposed to be for those provinces <laughs> now for these as if they're going to mention them or for these provinces and regions to submit a debt repayment plan by 30 august 2024 that's like in seven days we would also like to remind provinces regions clubs and individuals that those who have not submitted a payment plan wait individuals it's crazy though like i don't understand now where do individuals fit in in terms of chess south africa the huge structure and its members being provinces so individuals fit in as uh individual who arbiters maybe organizers maybe because it can't be players can it be but again again organizers do they really have to be individuals or they organize through regions and through their clubs, maybe, like maybe just anybody can. I I don't know. Yeah, see, certain things need clarification. So here it goes. Um, boom, 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 boom. So yeah, 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 yeah. We would also like to remind provinces, regions, clubs, and individuals that those who have not submitted a payment plan by thirty August twenty twenty four must cycle their 
Oh, all outstanding feeded that by 17. I look at you. me. Look, come on. <laughs> by 17, please. Okay. Uh, 17 September. Whoa. Must settle all outstanding feeder debt by 17 September 2024. That's quite an extension, right? Okay. Failure to make arrangements for payment or settle debt may result in the Expo considering a ban on chess as a rated events for any club, region, or province that remains in areas. The non-payment of feeder debt poses a significant risk for Chow to chess South Africa, including potential suspension from FIDE. We therefore respectfully urge all to comply with these directives. Should you have any inquiries, please direct them to the treasurer of Chess South Africa, Ms. Carol Lefiedi. At C. Lefiedi. Wait. Miss. All along I thought Carol was a man. I thought Carol Lefiedi was a man. And now it's actually a Miss. Oh, my bad. I'm so sorry, Miss Lefiedi. Yeah, please contact um yeah Miss Carol Lefiedi at yeah that's the email address and then yeah we kindly request that all provinces forward this communication to their members and clubs. Andre Levax, president, signed. Right. So <laughs> this is uh, quite interesting, and I think the one thing that is most interesting about this is this one response that came in. Uh, and one of the groups from uh, the, uh, from one of the regional regions, the regional president. So I should tell you, that's probably one of the regions that did not pay, right? Like if you get such a response from the region, you know. So I'm wondering how many regions have been have paid. So it reads as follows: Paying your debt has nothing to do with rebuilding Chess South Africa. You rebuild by leading by example. Avoid conflict of interest and make decisions in the interest of the general public, uh, chess public. You don't start by ensuring that your kids undeservedly play in prestige tournaments and then you push for them to get SA colors. You are most likely not in a position to tell us how to rebuild. Like the confidence in Andre Levax as chess president is that low. <laughs> so now you are raising such, like, such suspicions that make us think like you want us to help you or to help Chess South Africa pay so that your kids may have the privileges that must be for all players in Chess South Africa. But because if we don't pay, we don't assist Chess South Africa to pay, you are worried that your kids will suffer. Because obviously it seems like you are... Like that, that's basically what the message is saying. That because basically you are here for the interests of your kids. If your kids could actually play, even if Chess South Africa gets burned, you wouldn't care, right? Like you only care now because... If you want your kids to continue getting colors and possibly uh, get titles or get them titles or whatever. It's like, you're not doing this for us. You're not doing this to rebuild South Africa. You are doing this to benefit you and your family, you and your kids. I mean, that's basically what the comment is saying. It's suggesting. And when you look at it, it's obviously the exact the members of the executive and some of the, the organizers of this uh, Chess South African events that have been having their kids benefit from such... So now you're thinking they are pushing for the like others will just say you know what let us get burned or if we if, if, if unless let's let, let, let South Africa get banned again and then we rebuild with a proper executive that we know has our own into our interests at heart right like that's maybe some would say but maybe others will say um wait let us change this executive and then rebuild with an executive that we trust. I don't know, the whole executive or the leadership or the just one, or those that have unfairly benefited by obviously having their own kids. What has happened about that though? Like what really has happened? Were there any repercussions for those people that had their kids playing uh, prestige tournaments undeservedly? Has the Chess South African National Council ever acted on any of those, uh, or any, any of these issues that were publicly raised by parents, by players, by, um, uh, obviously, by us, Chess and Wine, by um, 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 regional executive regions and things like that, and other provinces. What happened with those, though? I've also noticed that uh, the the press, the interim president of the Eastern Cape was also suspended, and a, an administrator was uh, appointed. And that administrator was probably was uh, I hear was a uh, freak Giza Giza freak. Yeah, if Giza freak is like there's a heat and there's a 
freakishly heating and giza is like yeah, you see, I, I don't remember. Maybe that's not the name. Maybe I'm confusing it. I just don't know. I've never heard that name before. So when I hear freak Giza, freaky Giza, he's a freak. Like I don't mention it's just the wine talking. But then I heard that that uh, uh, executive or that uh, administrator was rejected by regions in the province. And I don't know if the Eastern Cape has anybody give us updates on what's happening in the Eastern Cape. Because apparently, then they no longer have that administrator because they don't want the administrator. And because the council of the province was never consulted about the appointment of the administrator, because the things that are happening there in the Eastern Cape are just happening whew, and monitored, if only minutes, are monitored by Chair South Africa with their own personal interests. We leave it at that. We don't want to like, yeah, but that's just what it is. So there's obviously suspensions happening all around for others who are doing things that are seen to be wrong. But yeah, by Chess South Africa. But who is suspending their members of Chess South Africa and who's putting them and like and like who is putting them on check? Because now that's why the confidence is that low, because we don't know who has them on check. Because we know definitely that they had their kids playing the, uh, uh, was it the SA Close, the African Youth, and yeah, maybe other events, unqualified, but nothing was said and nothing was done, no repercussions. And now they're going to come out with instructions and say, this is how we're going to do things, this is what you need to do, you need to pay us money. And have you noticed that they, <laughs> what am I mentioning this so, so late in the game? Like, have you noticed that the Chess of Africa has a new bank account? A Capitec account. <laughs> no, I know that a lot of people have a Capitec account for when they want to buy alcohol and for when they want to do doji things so that that doesn't reflect on their main accounts, right? Like, Chess South Africa has a Capitec account, like... There was the main. There are the main accounts which were handled by Hendrik the Deut, and now because uh, yeah, we're not running the main things, so we've got the side account. You know, a capital account is always the side account, right? Like the <laughs> capital account. Chess South Africa has a capital account, and they couldn't. I mean, we, we knew we heard. We've been heard getting reports of an a handover that was meant to take place, and apparently, hey, there was some. Funny games around the. You know what? We'll make this a topic for another day, especially the one regarding um, the handover that went awry. Henrik Dudoit kind of played games with this executive, and they just so flamed. He just can't stop playing around this man, can he now? Hey, has like looking at them is like ah, you dummies! I'm gonna hey, yeah, man, yo, he really, he hey, he really played numbers on them, and apparently there's accounts got closed for some reason it, it's it's a big story we'll come back with more details on that especially if we have somebody that could report on it with more information but it's so crazy so yeah so they had to go and get a capital account <laughs> but i mean like honestly a capital account we know man, it's that one right like i mean like it's so crazy it's so awesome the one that always has glitches and things like that yeah, like, hey, like, if you want to go deposit in the, the capital A I T M, the queues, yo, hey, you're going to wait, man, eh? Oh, you just have to do it online, and then the system won't work. Like, like <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that's what we got. Chess South Africa, our new executive. Yeah, we are the capital kids. This is, yeah, let's keep moving forward. Anyway, this has been Chess and Wine. Good evening. Ah, got some wine this week. These days. Today.